Archaeology, imagination, and educational policy? Archaeology is the study of the human past based on the things we've left behind. What does it have to do with imagination or educational policy? I think they're intimately and powerfully connected, and I hope to persuade you so too. I'm going to argue that for the vast majority of our existence, some two and a half million years, we human beings have displayed surprisingly little ingenuity or imagination, as evident in stone tools. Human innovation only exploded recently with the fluorescence of imagination as expressed in art over the last 100,000 years. Indeed, our brains are wired for imagination. Given the importance of imagination then, to cultivate good, creative thinking, we need to embrace and support the cradles of imagination, the arts and humanities. I'd like to begin by reflecting for a moment on one of the most enduring questions about humanity. What makes us human, different from other creatures, one of the most successful and dominant species on the planet? Let's take a quick look at a few of the leading answers to this question. Some hold that it's language and social ability and self-awareness that distinguish us and have prompted our success. Others conclude that it must be our intellect. In particular, many believe that it is our memory, the ability to recall and learn from past events, and our analytical intelligence the capacity to find order in the world and solve problems. While there's merit in all of these perspectives, a critical piece of the puzzle tends to get shortchanged, imagination. Clearly, our ability to imagine that which we haven't experienced or does not exist yet is a crucial part of our nature and success. It provides us with the vision and the ability to forge a better world. To analyze clues into the origins and evolution of our imagination can be gleaned from stone tools. They betray a fascinating trend, not a stable, steady improvement, but rather of extended near stagnation. For more than two million years, we basically used the same two forms, simple blade, simple flakes and hand choppers for cutting and hacking. Aside from the original act of their invention, they exhibit limited imagination. In this image, you can see how we continued to use similar flakes and choppers with little change or imagination for over two million years. From at least 2.6 million years ago to 250,000 years ago. Even chimps can copy and use our early flakes. What does that tell you about the complexity and imagination inherent in these tools. They're little more than what a chimp can muster. In fact, the first 90 plus percent of our existence as humans produce less than 10 percent of our cultural innovations. Think about that. Over 90 percent of our existence yielded less than 10 percent of our innovations. What changed to inspire and unleash the cascade of human creativity? I contend that it was in part the expansion of our capacity for imagination. Why do I say so? Largely because of the record of human artistic production. For our first two and a half million years, there are virtually no remains of art anywhere, none. How boring! Of course, art, above all, 
both requires and reflects imagination. Its absence for these two and a half million years suggests again that our early ancestors exercised minimal imagination. By the same token, its fluorescence over the last 100,000 years hints at increasing use of imagination. If you don't see art or imagination in this image, it's not your eyes or your mind playing tricks on you. It's me playing tricks on you. Okay. It's because there wasn't any for the first two and a half million years of our tenure on Earth. In contrast, early art, like this cave painting in Spain, is rich in imagination. From its fluid lines to its chestnut hues, it captures the essence and drama of a charging Ice Age bison. The key role of imagination in human cognition is further apparent in the latest insights from functional brain imaging. They reveal that 11 different centers of the human brain are involved in higher order cognition. The four most active regions all focus on visualization and the analysis of visual imagery. We think in large part visually. We imagine. We are wired to imagine. To turn a phrase from Descartes, we imagine, therefore we are. This view shows a human brain from above, with the colors indicating the 11 different regions of the brain that are involved in higher order thinking. Now, you can see the four main regions, the four most active regions, indicated by the colored arrows. These regions concentrate on imaging, imagining. The importance of imagination to human cognition also has serious potential implications for the real world, especially education. It suggests that to do the best for our students, we should fire up their imaginations. How do we spark their imaginations? By engaging the hearths of imagination, the arts and humanities. All fields employ and promote imagination, but nothing ignites imagination like painting, music, dance, theater, literature, religion, philosophy, history, or language. The power of the arts and humanities is readily apparent in our most imaginative leaders. Take Steve Jobs, for instance. He didn't complete a college degree, but when he did take courses, he studied Shakespeare, modern dance, calligraphy, religion, Buddhism. He credited his arts and humanities background for his business and technology savvy, praising his calligraphy course for the versatile fonts that we all enjoy and use on our devices every day. Unfortunately, as a society, we no longer value and support the arts and humanities like we once did. We view them increasingly as fun but unnecessary diversions from the real work of building a better world. We avoid courses in the arts and humanities. We discourage our children from majoring in them, favoring instead professional, commercial, and technical studies. We cut funding for and eliminate arts and humanities programs. There is a growing disconnect between the evolution and wiring of our brains for imagination and the way we trash the arts and humanities 
the crucibles of imagination. What can we do about it? Well, use your imagination, literally, okay? Light up your mind. Visit a museum. Go dancing. Take up photography. Encourage your kids to study literature, language, or religion. Above all, advocate for the arts and humanities. Defend them against cuts and elimination. Invest in them. Hire arts and humanities graduates. In the end, to build a better world, we must first imagine it. And the engines of our imagination are the arts and humanities. From Giza to Gaudi to Gary, our imaginations have taken us to dizzying heights. We cannot afford a future with less imagination. We must imagine and build one with more. Thank you.